yeah, you know, a good camera crew I got. All right, <clears throat> excuse me. Got to get ready for my close up. Well, yeah, I know. We started off with well. Here we are, our official day of Chantal Rail harvesting here in the uh, Ozarks, God's Garden, as we affectionately call it. I'm Glenn Monroe, the Roman gnome, and this is my fantastic forage into, uh, well, the fungus among us. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to my harvest of uh, chanterelles. Um, I think I actually have two kinds in here. One is the smooth and the other is actually called the gold. I don't see in the actual goldie in here. But the other one I like to call it, that's what I aim, you know, the smooth one. And uh, as you can see, I got several pounds of it. And uh, when you go to harvest, I recommend you use a bag of this nature. This is basically an airbag with a cinch on top of it. And uh, as you can tell, I have a pretty decent haul for somebody, you know, of my caliber. And uh, basically, they look like a flower. They're orange. They smell slightly like an apricot sometimes. It's July. And they're supposed to grow from late June to June, see, about July to August. They're predominantly uh, known to grow around, well, I found these around hickory trees in a flat slope. Grass, they grow in, they're social, but they don't grow along the same stem like a lot of the lookalikes do. And we'll go over that in a minute. I'll go over the uh, structure of the uh, mushroom here. Like I said, as you can tell on the back, it's got false gills or recessed gills. They look like little river tributaries. Uh, they're not like, and they're blunt. So, those don't look like regular gills that you would see on a, a fungus or some of the other mushrooms or any of the lookalikes, like the jack-o'-lantern, which is a lookalike, but you can tell the difference. Okay. When you cut this one in half, like I said, it looks like a flower, orchid, a lily, those orange ones that I see all the time. When you cut it in half, it's going to be white. I don't know if you can see that. Can you? Yep. Yeah. It's mo remotely fruity. Just a just a hint. Okay. See that? Looks like a little flower, don't it? Okay. Now, why I have you here at the end of our harvest, there's a couple other things we need to go over. Um, first of all, reference guides and actually being able to properly identify mushrooms in the wild, foraging as I call it, Harvesting from God's garden. I guess that's what I affectionately call it. And uh, reference guides are very important and actually having some expert advice. And when you eat some of these, do it in small amounts. Don't overly gorge yourself because it's like anything, even with candy, you know, you can have a little tummy ache. Okay? These are edible. You can eat these. I'm probably going to use these in a stew or fry these maybe sell some and trade them give some to my friends and family but as far as references go let's go over that first references we need to have a good reference guide I'm in Missouri so I use the Department of Conservation's Missouri's wild mushrooms guide to hunting identifying and cooking the state's most common mushrooms okay and this one that I have here you know our lucky contestant for the day see this is I'm going through several different species because it's a part of my forte, right? So this one right here actually is called the Santorellius 
the Terratias. Basically, it's the smooth chanterelle. And uh, sometimes it does look like it has ridges on them, but not this one. The one that actually has a, the false ridges or the blunt ridges, that one's, we call that the Goldilocks. It looks more yellow. This one is not, okay? This is the smooth chanterelle. It's more like an like orange, you know, like that your lighter, you know, that you're supposed to have that's, you know, hunt. It's got fluorescent orange so you don't lose it. So that's what kind of reminds me of is that the lighters I always buy from Bic. So kind of the same color. And like I said, these are edible. Otherwise, I wouldn't be wasting my time. I mean, I do identify ones that aren't or tricky or could be toxic or useful, things like that, in case somebody else has. And uh, so what we're going to do is we'll go over to the part. It's the Department of Conservation's Missouri Wild Mushrooms Guide to Hunting, Identify and Cooking the State's Most Common Mushroom, which is actually and, uh, it's, a, it's actually a book. You can get it at the library. You can order it online, $14 and it's authored by Maxine Stone and you can go online to Missouri Department of Conservation and you can look it up under their field guide like I do sometimes because you know it's always good to have a professional opinion and see if there's other relative species that you can use you know so you can get a little bit more knowledgeable about your craft right so first of all this edibility is top-notch they said this is high on the edibility scale um, the choice edibility with caution because there's a look-alike or two. One's a jack-o'-lantern and the way you tell the difference is, well, first of all, I just showed you. You split it in half. You look, when you cut it up, when you cut it from the base, you don't ever pull it from the root. You cut it from the base so you can save the root and the mycelium and all the other rhizomes and stuff that are in the soil so you don't destroy or damage that. But if you look in here, when you go to cut them off, slice one in half and you'll see the inside of it's white okay the jack-o'-lantern yellow this one has blunt recessed false ridges okay gills we call them false gills all right see that the jack-o'-lantern has true bladed gills this grows socially individually socially you know like sp scattered around on paths and you know, like I showed you video footage of how it grows. You know, it's sporated. Jack-o'-lantern grows on one stem, on stumps, things like that. And it plus, some people say it even glows in the dark. These don't grow in, glow in the dark, okay? They don't glow. Not that I know of. I checked them out. I actually put a bowl of these in there, and I waited in there for about 30 minutes to see if they glowed in the dark. They did not glow in the dark. That was the ones we got last night, okay? So that's some hints. You cut this in half, you should see white. Now, string cheese. When you pull it apart, it's stringy. Notice the stringiness. See, just like under the leaf. See how it's stringy? Should be like that string cheese you get in a little tube. There you go, like the kids like to eat. They'll probably regret it when they're older. But it looks like a flower. That's pretty much a typical color. That's the underside. And those are the, that's the guide I mainly use. I also use a Peterson field guide. And there's a couple other guides that I use just to double check, triple check, quadruple check. And uh, so, anyhow, to get back onto it, it's late June, July is when they start popping to early August. So we don't have but a, maybe a week or two. The habitat is single to many in moss, leaves, grass, paths, and under oaks. I've seen a lot of uh, hickory nuts, things like that. Look like squirrels had some activity. Deer, uh, deer paths, animal trails. But they like a light slope from the northwest to the southeast. Remember, we already established that the other day. Um, so the underside is orange to yellow. We've already established that. Orange to yellow. Smooth, mildly ridged, no gills. See any gills? You'll see little, um, you know flower petal veins in there because like I said we call those false gills blunt gills but it says it has no true gills the stalk is one to three inches in length see that's where I cut it remember we cut it so we don't pull mycelium and all the other rhizomes and things the attachment part 
okay? In length, right? It's one to three inches in length. We have a half an inch to an inch in width, all right? See it? No problem, right? It's curved or off-center in shape. Well, because it looks like a flower. That's what it, we're kind of going for, like a, a lily or a orchid is what it reminds me of. The ones that are in season right now as well. I've seen some this morning at my friend's house. So, in our off-center shape. Color is orange to yellow to white. Well, that's underneath, see? Other, fla other features, remember, when we cut this in the middle. Okay? When we cut this down the middle, the flesh is what? The flesh is white. See, I'll cut this one right down the middle, and you'll see the flesh is white. The look-alike jack-o'-lantern is yellow. That's white, okay? Put that back in there. Let's see, what else we got? Uh, the texture is smooth, other features, flesh is white. So we have the spore print. If you know how to take a spore print, it does have spores. It's pinkish to yellow. The spores magnified are elliptical and smooth. So this is the smooth operator is what I call it. It's just a smooth flower-like fungus mushroom. Very smooth. Looks just like a flower, orange. Smells like remotely like apricots sometimes. Um, the look-alike. Let's go over to the look-alike real quick. Uh, one of the look-alikes is the jack-o'-lantern, which is it'll make you sick and you'll probably wish you were dead. Uh, called Umphalotus eludens, and it fruits in the fall, but actually it says it's in season now, which is July to fall. But it fruits in the fall, so it's going to be in season and when it fruits. So that's fruit. When you see that, that's fruitation. Okay, so it fruits in the fall, stumps, close to stumps, on stumps, okay? Tree stumps, trees laying down, okay? Grows mostly on round stumps. Has sharp gills. It looks like a regular, you know, a mushroom with the gills. Sharp, straight, obviously, okay? Evil, you can tell the difference. And, like I said, when you cut it in half, it's oranged flesh. That's the look-alike. And it is toxic. It'll make you sick as a dog, and you probably wish you were dead. And it supposedly glows in the dark. Supposedly. I checked some of these last night to see if they glow in the dark. They did not. The other one's called a hedgehog, but you can... And that one's called the hydenum rependum, toothed underside. You can tell the difference between gills, false gills, uh, blunt ridges and toothed underside because it looks like teeth or pores or hexagons polygons whatever and it's toothed underside and that one's not necessarily a bad thing it just it ain't a chanterelle but the hedgehog's supposedly edible suppose and the other chanterelle which is santorellius sibarius 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 has fork ridges okay it has fork ridges not gills, but they look like ridges, but they're... Let's see if I got one that looks really close to one. It's probably... Actually, this probably is one. You see the ridges on the bottom of that? Nah, that actually is probably the smooth. But if you tell, if it was deeper than that, they would have forks on it. Okay, they're forked. They're not all slender, okay? So, like I said, it looks like a flower petal, don't it? It's white inside. I'll hold that still so you can check it because that's one of the definite signs you need to know when you're picking these. There you go. Now, now that we're done with that, let's see. Talk about some gear. What do we got here? Okay, when you're going out there, be responsible. Don't over harvest. Like I said, this is probably enough for me. Uh, let's talk about the tools. You definitely need a knife. You've got to have a knife or a cutting tool so you can cut the base of the uh, mushroom and leave the roots and the mycelium, the rhizomes, all the other stuff in the ground, okay? Just take enough for you and your family. You know, don't harvest a truckload of them and get busted. And the conservation guy will get mad at you, or woman. Okay, so some of your gear, you're definitely, like I said, you're going to need one of these, okay? You can get one of these. This is basically a laundry bag, dunking bag. I just use this for harvesting. It has a cinch on it. You can use this also for pressing grapes and things like that or bleaching tannins out of hickory nuts and washing your plants before you go to eat them and make stews and things like that. 
I use this as a harvesting bag and plus it doesn't rot as fast it lets this air out so this is one of the pieces of gear that I use a mesh net bag when I initially go somewhere okay when I initially go out to a location that I've never been to where I know I'm probably might get you know interviewed we'll just leave it at that I take the, a, a sample with me with one of these bags and I snap it on the side of my little tool belt right here and I just go out there and I casually take a few and then I go and I identify them properly and we have a little you know autopsy on the mushroom and make sure that it that's what it is and that's what it is and that's what it is I only take a few I try it out if anything bad happens I'm not going to share the results with you unless they're you know it's very uh, it's valuable okay valuable information especially if you like to do foraging wild crafting gardening free range gar gardening is what I call it okay so you got two different types of bags for two different reasons this is for the big harvest and preparation this is for you know certain similar and a smaller scale and then some of the places I go it's kind of a pain in the butt to get there so I found that Jansport makes a ta-da a netted backpack look at that see it's a backpack but it's made out of this material which is actually heavier so you can wear this on your back and haul your harvest because see I had to climb up some hills and stuff and then some brush and you know you got to go down the trail so you can fill this up with all this and you know you're free to go right and then you can wash it you know whatever you got to do it's all in the bag and plus you can carry some of your uh, equipment here or you can segregate some of your uh, harvest and things like that and Jan Sport makes this it's pretty durable I've used it for a year now just keep it uh, I don't know how well it handles UV but uh, I keep it I take care of good, good care of it it's worked out well or sometimes nowadays they got uh, they got these little six-pack cooler lunchbox things I got one of these as well as you can tell this one comes in handy for doing grapes berries things like that I used this yesterday to get the first little sample because I had more than the bag would hold and I came back and went and got more I filled that up has a strap on there so you can carry that and I'll zip it up and that's enough for you to make a meal or two right no harm no foul pretty easy sensible gear and uh, so that about covers it for the uh, chantrill experience we got a pretty good amount I'm happy with it it wasn't that complicated this is a pretty easy identifiable fungus mushroom however you want to call it but uh, like I said go over some of the ways to examine this like I said you got eyes nose cut one in half check the flesh white make sure you look at the ridges the gills uh, the color the way it was growing I mean yeah it sounds complicated but really it wasn't that that complicated I mean if you ever seen the, the jack-o-lantern it looks creepy I mean it's creepy these look pretty friendly like a flower those don't those look like some kind of Medusa scary Halloween you know ICP something or another you'd see something you know Medusa's hair if it was orange but uh yeah this is the amount we got it wasn't much of a big deal it was just kind of a weird location and if you have the right equipment the right knowledge some basic tools and like I said I use the Missouri Department of Conservation uh, resources online and I use the Missouri Department's conservations they have like I said the handbook that Maxine Stone put out and I suggest you check it out or purchase it or get it from the library um, it's supposed to be $14 I looked it up on Amazon it was 40 I think they made an error but it's supposed to be $14 for the handbook and it's very useful it has some decent photos so I thought I would go ahead and take some photos of my you know from our posterity so you would have a better identification because some of those photos weren't you know they don't show like I said the underside that was really what I needed to know I was like what does that look like 
this piece right here, you know, if you cut it in half, smell, you know, location where it grows. And it had some basic knowledge, which was pretty easy. And, you know, they haven't failed me yet. I've tried it. But just be aware that, you know, there's some other stuff out there that does kind of look similar to the inexperienced uh, forager, uh, mushroom hunter. I guess that's what they call them, mushroom hunter. I don't say hunting. I never say hunting. We're going mushroom hunt. I don't ever say that. I'm going to go forage for funguses. You know, I, I... Anyhow, so I hope that helped you out uh, a little bit. But as far as uh, what you can do with these, you can fry them, make soups out of them, freeze them, put some spices in there with them and freeze them for a while. Some places, like I said, gourmet restaurants, trade barter or probably you actually will purchase them from you just make sure you're mindful where you the location where you got them the location where you got them and uh you know just be aware of the surroundings make sure it's not next next to a toxic waste dump or you, you know where i'm going with this right but uh this was a pretty easy uh forge I'm in, I'm in, I'm happy. It was obvious, actually. I mean, you'll see the video footage. You'll, it's like, wow, that's pretty obvious. And because of the way they are, they're pretty friendly. They smell decent. Uh, they're obvious. Look, hey, look at me. Come pick me. And uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about it. And so I'm Glenn Monroe, the Roman Gnome, and uh, thank you for joining me on uh, the Roman Gnome's Fantastic Forage. Here in the Ozarks, and uh, if you have any questions or comments, or you know you want to come hang out with me, and we can have a little forage expedition of our own, you can email me at glennwmsmith at gmail.com. Uh, leave a comment, subscribe. Hey, I'm here in Central Missouri area. Come by, hang out with me. Okay. So, and with that, I'm Glenn Monroe. And uh, may your kneading bowl always be full. <laughs> right? And may your wine goblet always overflow. And your harvest always be plentiful. So I'll see you guys later and uh, happy harvesting.